In Lesson 7.4, Part 2, you will graph logarithmic functions. In our first example, we want to find the inverse of the function. And our first equation is y equals 7 to the x power. And this is an exponential equation, and we're going to find its inverse. Remember, to find its inverse, we switch the domain and range. So we switch the x and y values. So the equation is x equals 7 to the y power. Now these two are inverses of one another, but we need to leave this inverse in proper form, so we need to solve for y. And to solve for that exponent y, we need a logarithm. y is equal to log base 7 of x. So this logarithmic equation and this exponential equation are inverses of one another. Okay, let's try it again in problem two. We're starting with a logarithmic equation, y equals log base b of x. To get its inverse, we switch x and y. And then to leave this inverse in proper form, we solve for y. So we're going to solve this logarithmic equation for y, which means we're going to go from log logarithmic form to exponential form. So that, the, that y is equal to base b raised to the x power. So this equation, this exponential equation, is the inverse of the logarithmic equation that we started with. Okay, let's try it again in problem three. We want to switch x and y to get the inverse of this logarithmic equation. And then we need to put it in proper form by solving for y. So to solve for y, we need to go from logarithmic form to exponential form. This is ln, which means our base is e, log base e, raised to the x power. The log is just an exponent. And e to the x power is equal to y minus 3. And now to get y alone, all we have to do is add 3 to both sides of this equation. So y is equal to e to the x power plus 3. And this exponential equation is the inverse of this logarithmic equation. Okay, here we're going to graph inverses y equals 1 half to the x power and y equals log base 1 half of x on the same coordinate plane and state the domain and range of each function. So let's start with the exponential equation. y equals 1 half raised to the x power. I know that this is exponential decay because the base b is a fraction, 1 half, between 0 and 1. So I'll be graphing an exponential decay curve. And I want to find the important part of that curve, so I'm going to let x equal negative 1, 0, and 1, and solve for y. So when x is negative 1, 1 half to the negative 1 power is the same as 2 to the positive 1 power, or just 2. Let x equal 0. 1 half to the 0 power is 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. Let x equal 1. 1 half to the first power is 1 half. So now I'll graph these points on the coordinate plane. Negative 1, 2. 0, 1 is the y-intercept. And 1, 1 half. This exponential decay curve will fall and travel through those points, turning and then following its asymptote, the x-axis. Okay, the domain of this function. Since x is an exponent, it can be any real number. And the range. Since the x-axis is the asymptote that this curve approaches, y is always going to be greater than 0. Okay, now let's graph its inverse, this logarithmic equation, y equals log base 1 half of x. Because I already have a table of values for the exponential equation and this logarithmic equation is its inverse, all I have to do is switch those x and y values. So 2, negative 1 is a point on this curve. 1, 0 is a point on this logarithmic curve. And 1, half, 1. 
Notice that the y values this time are negative 1, 0, and 1 to get the important part of the curve. So we'll graph 2, negative 1, 1, 0, and 1 half 1. Now this logarithmic curve is going to have a vertical asymptote, the y-axis. It's going to turn through those points that we graphed and it's going to fall more slowly after that. Okay, so again, that y-axis is the asymptote for this logarithmic equation. And remember, inverses are reflections of one another on the coordinate plane about this line y equals x. If you fold the graph on that dotted line, those curves will coincide or lie on top of one another. The domain for this logarithmic equation, our x values are restricted since our asymptote is vertical. x is going to be greater than 0. But our range, our y values, will be all real numbers this time. So you can see how opposite an exponential function and its logarithmic inverse are. Okay, here we're going to graph y equals log base 1 half of x plus 4 and state the domain and range. Okay, to do that we're going to make a table of values. And since it's a logarithmic equation, we're going to want to assign values to y. To decide what values to assign to y, I'm going to solve this equation for x. To do that, the first thing I need to do is move 4 to the other side, subtract 4 from both sides of this equation, and then go from logarithmic form to exponential form. The base is 1 half. It's raised to the y minus 4 power, and it's equal to x. So now I can see that if I want to raise this base to the negative 1, 0, and first power, I'm going to have to let y equal 3 to get an exponent in negative 1. I'm going to have to let y equal 4 in order to get an exponent of 0. And I'm going to have to let y equal 5 in order to get an exponent of 1. So now let's solve for x. If I let y equal 3, 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 1 half to the negative first power is the same as 2 to the positive first power, or just 2. So x is equal to 2. Now let y equal 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. 1 half to the 0 power is 1. So x is equal to 1. Let y equal 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 half to the first power is 1 half. So x is equal to 1 half. So we'll graph these ordered pairs. 2, 3, and 1, 4, and 1 half, 5. So again, remember our uh, asymptote for a logarithmic curve is vertical. It's the y-axis in this case. And so this curve follows the y-axis and falls from left to right. The domain for this curve Again, since the asymptote is vertical, is x is greater than 0. And the range is all real numbers. OK, uh, the second graph on this uh, page is y equals log base 3 of x minus 2. We want to graph that equation and state the domain and range. So again, we'll make a table of values. And we want to assign values to y. So to decide what to uh, assign to y, we're going to solve for x again. When I look at x in this equation, there's a value 2 subtracted from x. That's going to shift our vertical asymptote two units to the right. So I'm going to put that asymptote in place. And now I'm going to solve for x. 
I'm going to go from logarithmic form to exponential form. The base is 3, it's raised to the y power, and that's equal to x minus 2. To get x alone now, all I have to do is add 2 to both sides, and I'm ready to assign values to y. Since y is the only uh, exponent on 3, I'm going to let y equal negative 1, 0, and 1. When y is negative 1, I have 3 to the negative 1 power. That's the same as 1 third. And 1 third plus 2 is 2 and 1 third. Now let y equal 0. 3 to the 0 power is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. And now let y equal 1. 3 to the first power is 3, and 3 plus 2 is 5. So now I have my ordered pairs that I can put on the coordinate plane. 5, 1. and 3, 0, and 2 and a third, negative 1. So you can see that we're close to our, our vertical asymptote. So this curve is going to follow that asymptote from below, turn, and increase slowly after that. You can see that this logarithmic curve is the inverse of a exponential growth curve rather than decay curve. And that's why it's rising from left to right rather than falling from le left to right like the one on the other side. The equation on the left has a base of 1 half, but the equation on the right has a base of 3. 3 is going to cause this um, logarithmic curve to be the inverse of a exponential growth curve. We still need a domain and range here. The domain is restricted. Our x values will never cross that vertical asymptote, so x is going to be greater than 2. And our range is all real numbers. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 14 through 17 on pages 501 and 503 of your textbook.